Shalom, family and friends, brothers and sisters, Shabar, Judah, Ben, Israel, bringing you another awesome lesson on tonight. Solid Foundation Israelite Academy, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, the lesson for tonight is going to be based on biblical prophecies concerning Revelation. We'll go into Revelation 17th chapter. And we will also talk about political issues on tonight. So it's going to be very wonderful, brothers and sisters. It's going to be very wonderful. What more can I say? It's going to be wonderful. So let's get into it. Before we get into the lesson, we give double honors to the elders. Uh, salutations to the brothers. That's preaching and teaching the truth and sincerity. Weeks in, weeks out. In season and out of season. Edifying the blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. Why? Because truly you are the biblical Israelites, the chosen seed, the children of the Most High God. And without uh, further ado, we're going to get into the lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashat, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So here we go. We're going to start off with Columbia. Now, what is Columbia? We will go over this. So let me bring up the magnifying glass. As you can see, it says Columbia. So we're going to go into it. Columbia. Now, Columbia, let's look up this thing, Columbia. It says that, uh, we scoot it over a little bit. It says Columbia, the historical, the historical female personification of the United States of America. So this is a poetic name for the Americas. This is a poetic name for the United States of America. So if you want to call the U.S. Columbia, this is a poetic name for that. It says Columbia, the historical female personification. So um, as you can see right here, female personification of the United States of America. So, the United States of America, I like to say the United Snakes, but the United States of America is personified as a historical female. And this is going to correlate with biblical prophecy. So, as you can see here, Columbia, let's bring it up again, is a historical name used by some Europeans and Americans to describe the Americas the New World, and sometimes, more specifically, the United States of America. It is also a name given to the spirit of the frontier, of which was used to illustrate manifest destiny, and so forth, etc. But anyway, let's go over Columbia and the biblical description. Let's go into the Bible, and we're going to find out Columbia. The historical female personification of the United States. What the biblical prophecy says about this. So, hold that. And now we are going into Revelation 17. Okay, so this is the Revelation. The book of Revelation. The last book of your Bible. Revelation. The last book of your Bible. Revelation is the book of revealing. It speaks of various prophecies. Prophecies that have taken place prophecies that is soon to come so remember keep in mind Columbia keep in mind Columbia do not forget about this because Columbia is a personification for the United States of America which is a woman right so let's go into biblical prophecy now when you go into biblical prophecy let's start with Revelation 17 it says and there came one of the seven angels which had seven vowels and talked with me. This is John the Revelator speaking. Saying unto me. Come here. Or hither. I will shew. I will show unto thee. I will show you. The judgment of the great whore. That sits upon many waters. So. Looks like. The most high God. Is showing John the Revelator. Which one, which was. One of his disciples that wrote the book of Revelation on the island of Patmos. The Most High God is showing John judgment of this great whore. Judgment that's going to happen to this woman. The Bible signifies this woman as a great whore that sitteth upon many waters. 
So what is that woman? What is that judgment that's going to come upon that great whore? It's talking about America. How do we know that? Because we already have viewed in um, Wikipedia description box. It says that the name for Columbia, as you can see right here, that Columbia may refer to the Columbian name is what? It says the historical female personification of the United States. And so that's the great whore that uh, when you come across Revelation 17, this is the great whore it talks about that sits upon many waters. And as a commemoration of the great whore, New York City, NYC, um, built the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty was actually constructed by, uh, I believe, French Masons. And so they built up the Statue of Liberty, which is uh, the epitome. The Statue of Liberty if, is the epitome of America. And so you can see right there, you cannot refute this, that America, the United States, is a female personification of this woman named Columbia. All right, as you can see. And so when you go into your Bible... This is the great whore of Revelation 17. It is America, Columbia. That's the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, the many waters are many nations. How we know that? Let's go to Revelation 17 and 15. This is Revelation 17 and 15. Scroll down to the 15th verse, and it says, And he said unto me, The waters which you saw where the whore sitteth, America, Columbia, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So basically he was explaining the Most High God and the Spirit was explaining to John the Revelator that the waters which he saw the whore sitteth upon, these were figurative, uh, figurative manner of people. The water is figurative. Water symbolized, the waters symbolize peoples, many peoples, multitudes, and nations and tongues. So when you think of America, you think of many people, multitudes, and tongues. When you think of America, do you not think of many people, multitudes, and tongues? Why? Because simply America is known as the melting pot. It's known as, it's known as the melting pot. pot. You know, uh, there are many nations that is dwelling in America, Chinese, Japanese, East Indians, Arabs, Africans, Persians. You know, so many nations here, man. So America is the great melting pot. And you can see right there, Columbia, which is personified as America, as being a woman. There are many nations, man, here. Okay, and this is the great whore. And so... Back to Revelation 17 and 15. There are many people that stand in America, the United States. Multitude, nations, and tongues. Okay. Now, something is going to happen to America. Something is going to happen to this woman. There's nothing good that's coming to this woman. We already know that this woman symbolized the United States of America. So it's safe to say there's nothing good that's coming to America. America has future judgments that's going to that's gonna take place. America will be judged because America have done many unspeakable atrocities and did many of uh, horrendous things that's, that she must pay for. And so this is what Revelation 17 is talking about. It's talking about that great whore. Okay? That great whore. That sit at the pond, many waters. Now I'm gonna pull this out. So here we go. Here it says, "What is the Columbia statue? Columbia, right? A historical name used by some Europeans and Americans to describe the Americas. So it says the New World, and sometimes more specifically, the United States of America, as you can see." So we're going to show you the Columbia statue uh, images, the Columbia statue. Let's go into that, the statue of Columbia, and we will show you right quick in a hurry. Uh, here we go, right there. 
I'm going to zoom in. That is the statue of Columbia. Columbia, the goddess of the United States. That's the great whore that Revelation 17 talks about. Now, you can find this woman on the top of, uh, I believe, the U.S. Capitol. All right, we're not going to go into the whole entire article. Uh, but I believe this woman is found on the top of the U.S. US Capitol. In the early history, it says right here, in the early history of the United States, Columbia was visualized as a goddess-like female national personification of the United States and of liberty itself. Some historians claim that she emerged from the imagination of Chief Justice Samuel Sewall of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, who in, who in 1697 wrote a poem suggesting that America's colonies be called Columbia, a feminization of Christopher Columbus' last name, because America was going, America was going to be called Columbia, but Christopher Columbus, he didn't get the credit because he actually never settled, settled to America. America was named after an Italian navigator by the name of Amerigo Vespucci. Okay, and so, you know, this is where America comes from, Amerigo Vespucci, which was an Italian navigator. But back to the Columbia, the goddess of the United States. I believe this is found on top of the United States Capitol. So let's put that in right quick in a hurry. And then we'll get back to the scriptures. U.S. Capitol. I believe it's the U.S. Capitol. Yeah, that's the United States Capitol. That's the U.S. Capitol. All right. The United States Capitol. All right. So we're going into that. The United States Capitol. Wikipedia. The United States Capitol. All right. So let's blow that up. The United States Capitol is, is often called the Capitol Building. It is the home of the United States Congress and the seat of the legislative branch, the seat of the legislative branch of the United States federal government. Its location is on Capitol Hill at the eastern end of the National Mall in Washington, D.C., and so this is where you can find the goddess that signifies America as Columbia. You can find her on, on the top of the United States Capitol building. Okay, so let's get some images of that. We're trying to just show you the great whore of Revelation 17. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what we're trying to show you. And so uh, let's look at some images of the United States Capitol. And you will see that great whore on the top if we can get some close-up images uh, we want to get we want to get a close-up image okay here here go one uh, right there freedom statue at the United States Capitol building and you see on the top right there it says e pluribus unum that's a Latin phrase which means out of many one okay because they're planned on making out of many people here a one world government under Satan and so here's the woman that's the great whore that's Columbia alright I already showed you this is the United States capital and on the top of that capital is that great whore alright also another personification of that great whore on or you can say Another signification of the great whore, um, you can put United States Capital Woman if you will, and you can see that as well, United States Capital Woman, okay, and there she is right there, Statue of Freedom, okay, so that's the great whore, I'm not making it up, this is the great whore of Revelation 17, that's the great whore, that signifies America itself, this is America, alright, once more, I'm going to show you, then we'll move on. The great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I know you may say, well, she don't sit upon many waters right here. Seems like she's sitting upon the United States Capitol. 
but I'm going to show you another image that this great whore sitteth upon. It's, it's, it's basically when it says the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, it's just going back to uh, the Statue of Liberty because that's also a personification of America. And if it's not, if it's not a uh, Statue of Freedom that sits upon the uh, United States Capitol, as you can see here, you can you can find it you can find it uh sitting upon many waters Statue of Liberty. All right, so let's look at the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. Wonderful lesson on the night, brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. Don't go to sleep on me yet. We about to turn it up. This is the Statue of Liberty. There you go. And so when you see them, when you when you come across in Revelation 17. It says that great whore that, that great whore that sitteth upon many waters. This is also a perfect illustration of the great whore America, the Statue of Freedom, Statue of Freedom, Freedom that can be also found on the uh, United States Capitol. America that also is personified as uh, Columbia, right there. Also personified as Columbia. She the one that sits upon many waters, as you can see right there. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, right there. So that's your Revelation 17 and 1. The great whore. These waters signifies that America sits upon many nations and kindreds of people. That's what the water signifies. We already showed you that in Revelation 17, 15, when it says the waters that thou sawest, the whole city upon are peoples and multitudes and nations of people. And so this is what's going on in America. America is a melting pot, man. So now we're going on with uh, further biblical inscription. All right, Revelation 17, 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. So it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The kings of the earth are your, are your modern day presidents. Th those are the kings of the earth. The kings of the earth are your modern day presidents working from your modern day presidents going up to the higher powers that be the 13 international uh, secret families that you know know as the elites you know the Rothschilds and so forth the, the, from the presidents to the elites those are known as the kings of the earth I don't even want to put presidents in there because the president is nothing but like a CEO of a corporation because America is a corporation not really a country so I wouldn't say the presidents really are kings because under the 13th Amendment, it was said that presidents are not to uh, profess themselves to be kings at all. I believe under the 13th Amendment, let's look at that right quick. All right, here is something I pulled up. It says a president is not a king and states must make sure of it. So the president is not a king of the United States. Pre a president is not a king and states must make sure of it. You know what I'm saying? You can see this video. Our nation's first president was George Washington. That's not my damn president. That's Esau's president. But anyway, George Washington, supposedly the first president, supposedly, under the newly formed constitution in 1789, found himself in an uncomfortable position as the nation's first chief executive and commander-in-chief. He knew the delicate, delicate ground between strength and tyranny. Fearing any comparison to the monarchical government from which America had just been liberated, Washington took care to avoid any physical or symbolic references to European monarchs. When the Senate proposed that he be called by the official title, His Highness, the President of the United States of America and the Protector of their Liberties, and a bash Washington off for the more modest address of Mr. President. So I believe this is under the 14th Amendment. It's been a while since I looked this up. Out of one of the amendments, no president can profess himself to be king. Okay? I believe that's out of the 14th Amendment. I believe out of the 14th Amendment, no president can profess himself to be a king, if, if, I, if I'm right. Just, just look it up. And that's why it says, I don't want to even add presidents with Revelation 17 and 2. They say, whom the kings of the earth committed fornication. So I'm not going to add presidents there. Even though I said that, I'm not going to put presidents in there. Because presidents, a president, okay, let, let me, let me uh, school you on a president. A president, what about a president? Let's go back, because we'll go into that. 
because this is political talk here, man. This is a wonderful lesson on tonight. You brothers and sisters are in for edification, man. Let's bring up presidents. List of presidents. All right. So let's look at. It don't even really matter. We can just pick one, I guess. All these presidents. These are just a list of presidents. Okay, all the presidents. Now, a president. A president is not the king of the United States. And that's why I don't want to really pursue in the Revelation 17 2. It says, whom, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. I'm not going to relate that to presidents in Revelation 17 2 because they're not kings of the earth. Presidents are nothing but CEOs of a corporation. A president is over a corporation. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Because I don't want to take a whole lot of time. Basically, uh, every president is over a corporation. So America is not a country. It's a corporation. You should know this by now. Um, so, uh, a president cannot rule countries. A president cannot rule countries. Okay. A president is over corporation. But who can rule countries? Only kings or queens can rule countries. Legally, a president cannot rule over a country, but can make decisions on the behalf of the king and queen. All right? So, the United States of America is ran by a president. Why? Because it's a damn corporation and not a country. United States of America became a corporation, I believe, back in the year of 1871. You can do your research on it. I believe 1871 is when America America has been a corporation ever since. 1871, the Act of 1871. And we've been having presidents as CEOs to be over corporations. So a president is not a king. All right. He's not a king. Presidents are not kings. So when you look at Revelation 17, 2, the kings of the earth is what you call the royal elite families. Now I'm going to show you them too. The royal elite families. So let me show you the royal elite families. Now these international banking families. All right. 13 banking families. They are the ones that's known as the kings of the earth. The elites, all right, the kings of the earth. Uh, you see, uh, let's 13 banking families of the Illuminati. These are like kings of the earth, you know what I'm saying? Rockefellers, which controls the oil, all right, the Rothschilds, which confiscated all the gold, they stole off the gold. Because if you didn't know this, like I said, I'm going in a little politics. If you didn't know this, man, when you think about the gold, the Rothschilds basically got all the gold. Then you got the Abrahamas, which is over diamonds. Okay? So when you look at gold, oil, and diamonds, what does that spell? The Almighty God, gold, oil, and diamonds. Or you can say gold, oil, and drugs. So on the back of your dollar bill, when they say in God we trust, they're not talking about the Most High God of Israel. They're talking about gold, oil, and diamonds, if not drugs. So these people are royal elite families. These people are known as what? Pursuing the Revelation 17, 2, kings of the earth, man. You see? Know your enemy. These men rule the world. These men rule the world, man. They are known as kings of the earth. So the kings of the earth is not referring to presidents because they don't run countries. They can't rule countries. Only kings and queens can rule countries. So the president, you know, uh, of the United States don't work for the American people. He works for the corporation. He don't give a damn about you. And the president is of a corporation. And it's like no different than McDonald's. Corporation is like America is no different than um, 
IBM, General Motors, Microsoft, Mike, McDonald's, AT&T, America is just simply no different than that. It's a corporation. So countries don't have presidents. Countries don't have presidents, but corporations do. And when did America become a corporation? The Act of 1871. So since the United States is a corporation, who owns the corporation of the United States? Who owns it? The president is just over it. Who owns the corporation of the United States? Canada and Australia. Canada and Australia. Look it up. Canada and Australia, whose leaders are prime ministers, right? Of Queen Elizabeth, goes back to Britain. The United States is just another British crown colony. All right? So America never really got independence from British rule. That's another lie they told you dealing with fake ass July 4th, 1776. America was never free from British rule, man. And then they have secret corporations today that's owned by Britain, like IRS, Internal Revenue Service, that's owned by Great Britain. Um, FICA, you have Federal Insurance Contribution Act, which is FICA, controlled by Great Britain. Um, the Federal Reserve, controlled by Great Britain. NASA, um, National Aeronautic Space Administration, controlled by Great Britain. The NSA, controlled by Great Britain. America is a British crown colony. Because when you go into the biblical prophecies, it tells you that Britannica was, was part of the ten horns of the EU. America came out of England, man. Alright? But that's another lesson within itself. So I'm just trying to school you brothers and sisters. Presidents don't own nothing. They don't run shit. They don't run nothing. These people are the kings of the earth that goes back to Revelation 17 and 2. Alright? I'm just trying to show you. 13 uh, royal banking families, man. Alright? Royal banking families. Okay, so uh, 13... 13 Illuminati bloodlines. Let's type that in. You can see for yourself. All right, here is the 13 Illuminati bloodlines. I also have these DVDs. You might want to get these DVDs if you can. Bloodlines of the Illuminati. You have 13 of them. 13 of them. 13 of the uh 13 bloodlines. That's why they make it known throughout symbology. They they don't they they make it known throughout symbology that there are 13 bloodlines. Or what you can say, 13 royal banking families, which is known as kings of the earth, whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication, because these people run the whole world, man. These 13 international banking families. And they let it be known through their symbology. Like what? McDonald's, man. Let's look at the McDonald's logo, okay? McDonald's uh, logo. Now, many of you may not be aware of this, but I'm just point some things out you see the McDonald's logo it says I'm loving it you wouldn't even think to just scrutinize the logo if you scrutinize the logo you analyze it you will see the 13 how McDonald's is a 13 I'm loving it creates the one the M is the three so when you turn I'm loving it this logo when you turn it to the side I'm loving it creates the one and the M is the three goes back to where the 13 Illuminati banking families, man. Now, another one they love to hide the 13 there. Um, I'll just duplicate this. They like to hide the 13 in Arby's. You ever heard of Arby's? Let's check out that, man. Arby's logo. You can see the 13 in that. It's all in your face. It's in your face each and every each and every day. But you just got to pay attention to it. You see Arby's? Now when you turn Arby's to the side, it's a one and a three. If you turn Arby's to the side, there is your one right there and there's the three, the 13. Okay? Now let's look at Taki's logo. I'm just showing you, man. It's right in your face. Right in your face, man. Taki's logo. Now I'm gonna show you something. Now the company that made Takis, this company is known as Barcel. Now when you look at Barcel, what do you see? You see the one and the three. They want you to believe that it's a B, but no, it's the one and the three. 
Barcel, the same company that makes the Takis, goes back to these 13 Illuminati bloodlines. Okay? Baskin Robbins. It's all in your face. Baskin Robbins logo. And when you look at Baskin Robbins, it's all in your face, man. Baskin Robbins. 31, which is a satanic, a satanic holiday, which is October. October 31st, that's a satanic holiday because these elites are satanic and they highly esteem that and do many rituals during that time too. But if you look at the, the one as Baskin Robbins, you look at the, 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 the blue line, that's a one, and the pink three, that's a 13. Which goes right back to where? 13 Illuminati banking families. So I'm not making it up, man. It's time for you to open your eyes up. I got a Bible scripture I want to bring out. Because like I say, I usually don't get into the Illuminati. I usually don't do lessons like this. But um, it's okay. You know? Mix a little politics up with it. Alright, this is... It says... Proverbs 14, 15. It says, The simple believes every word, but the putit man looketh well to his going. Only a putit man is going to be able to look well and see the deep, dark, hidden messages behind these 13 Illuminati bloodlines by decoding these uh, various symbols that they love to hide their craftiness in in America. And like I said, it's many more than that, but I'm not going to keep going. It's many more than that, but I'm not going to keep going. So, yes, presidents don't run and rule and rule countries. All right? They can't do that. Presidents is over corporations. So, not to take too much time in Revelation 17, too, when it talks about the kings of the earth. That's really talking about the, the, the elites. That's really talking about, um, one more time, that's really talking about these bloodlines here. And yeah, if you did not know this, you can't just decide to run for president. Anybody cannot just decide to run for president. In order to be president, your, blood, your bloodline has to go back to the king of England, man. All right? Yes, man. So, I have a lot of stuff written down because it's deep knowledge. I can't remember it all. So, most of us U.S. citizens, because we are citizens, because we are slaves to this corporation. Most U.S. citizens believe that the United States is a country. We already should know by now. It's not ever since the act of 1871. And the president is the most powerful man on the earth, Rome. The president is not the most powerful man on the earth. president is nothing but... CEO over corporation, all right, and the president is the head of the corporation of the United States, and his elected officials work for the corporation, not for the American people. American presidents are handpicked and financed by special interest power groups, so your vote doesn't matter because basically these thirteen international bloodlines are what you can say thirteen. Um, supposedly secret bloodlines, the Illuminati, they are the one that handpicked the president. Your votes don't count because if you look into the electoral college, you they would tell you, man, that these elites handpicked the president. Every president bloodline is related to the King of England, you know, and every president was primarily a Freemason. And so you just can't up and run for president if you want to. No, your bloodline has to go back to the former king of England. Why? Because America is a British crown colony and you just can't run for president if you think that you can. No, this is a bloodline thing. The former king of England. Your bloodline has to go back to a former king of England in order to be president. Most of you will say, well, how Barack Obama got president? Because his mother bloodline, man, goes back to the king of England. You'll never see a, a black on black person in office. Barack Obama had that Edomite blood within him through his mother and Barack Obama and George Bush are related because they are cousins and if you don't believe me you can look this up through his mother this is how he got in office 
because the, the bloodline going back to the former king of England, man. Do your research. Not to, not to stay too long on politics. But yeah. Uh when it goes when it go um uh goes back to Columbia, Columbia, like I stated, Columbia. Let's look at that again. Columbia, right here. That's personification of the United States. Now, why you think they call Washington DC Washington DC? Washington DC. Uh let's look at America. America is a corporation. All right. America is a corporation. America is a corporation. I'm going to show you. It's something like this. I want you to see. That's all it is. It's, it's like that, man. Now, the 50 states are separate from the jurisdiction of the lands of District Columbia. So these 50 states are separate from the jurisdiction. Now, what is the jurisdiction? The jurisdiction is Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is not part of the United States, if you didn't know that. Washington DC. What D, what DC stands for? What do DC stands for? District Columbia, man. DC stands for District Columbia. So you can say that Washington DC is basically you know District Columbia goes back to this whore that Revelation 17 talks about. It's a jurisdiction and it's not part of the United States, believe it or not. Washington DC is not a state. It's a jurisdiction called the District of Columbia, the district of this woman. So when Revelation 17 speaks about this great hall, it's primarily talking about District Columbia, that 10-mile stretch, all right? District Columbia, that 10-mile stretch, um, uh, a 10-mile secret state that's subjected from the United States Constitution and that's known as Washington, D.C. So if you think of Washington, D.C. is part of the United States, no. It's separate from that. It's subject from the other 50 states. District Columbia, D.C. This is why everything that you come across um, is CBS, man. CBS logo. CBS, the all seeing eye. CBS. I'm trying to put y'all on some game. CBS. Uh, CBS abbreviation, man. Let's look at that. CBS abbreviation. Let's see what it stands for. All right. Because they have all these lies, but I'm going to break it down. It don't stand for a core banking solution. It don't stand for capability-based security. That ain't what CBS stand for. They might, they might not even want to tell you. Because these damn devils try to suppress everything. But CBS stands for Columbia Broadcasting System. CBS stands for Columbia Broadcasting System. Back to Columbia. Okay, that's what CBS stands for. Columbia. You will see something like this. I'm trying to put you guys on game, man. Columbia University. Columbia University. All right, uh, Columbia University. You can you'll see Columbia pictures. Trying to put y'all on game tonight. Columbia. When you view your motion pictures, you see this right here. That goes back to that woman. That that's that's the woman, man. That great whore that Revelation 17 talks about. Columbia, Columbia pictures. Don't you see that? When your movie comes on, Columbia Space Shuttle, you know, Columbia Space Shuttle, I mean, Columbia Space Shuttle is everywhere. Columbia Space Shuttle, man, see, Columbia Space Shuttle, Columbia Records, it's everywhere. Open your eyes up, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys, Columbia Records logo. The all-seeing eye right there. Columbia Records. 
Now you seen on CBS they had the same damn all seeing eye. Columbia Records. So what is it talking about? It's talking about District Columbia. Okay? It goes back to basically primary, primary, primarily Columbia, man. So Washington, D.C. is not part of the United States of America, man. It's a jurisdiction. I'm bringing it out. I'm trying to wake you guys up. Let you see what the hell really going on. America was sold back in 1871. And guess what? We are all debt slaves. It was sold. Back in 1871, America was sold under the act of uh, uh, 1871 that deals with the, uh, the act of 1871. America became a corporation. Now, like I said, did you know about your birth certificate? When you were born, your parents registered you with the government as a corporation by receiving and signing a birth certificate. In a few years, your corporation will receive a taxpayer ID called a social security number. This is so you can be used as collateral for the government to inquire debt. That's right. You and your labor time and energy is what backs up the national debt. You are stock. And they use your social security, they use your birth certificate for, uh, for stock. Okay? Security stock. Which is a security of uh, a stock market. The stock market in New York City, they use your birth certificate for stock. Because your birth certificate are worth millions of dollars, man. And they use this for collateral. They pay off their damn debts. That's what the Rothschild do. So when your parents sign your birth certificate, actually they sign you over to this corporation. And you become an employee of the corporation. And now reparations are due. Because now you're used for collateral to pay off the Rothschild's goddamn debt. So that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. It's a lot of stuff that I can bring out. So yeah, America is a corporation that needs your birth certificate for collateral to pay off their damn debt. Because why? Why? These um, international banking families, uh, especially the Rothschilds, what did they do? Uh, uh, got all the gold. What is that uh, picture at? Right here. The Rothschilds confiscated all the goddamn gold. If you don't know that, you can look up uh, the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve Act came into what? The year 1913. 1913. The Federal Reserve Act was established. The bank started issuing Federal Reserve notes from that point. Because your money's supposed to be backed by the gold. That's what that's what your your Federal Reserve note's supposed to be backed by. Supposed to be backed up by gold and silver. But now they just print money out of damn thin air today. They print money out of thin air now. Why? If they're not printing out of thin air, they're using your birth certificate for collateral. Because the rock childs, man. What happened? Franklin Delano Roosevelt came along in 1933. And he ordered all the gold coins, gold bungings, and gold certificates to be turned into the Federal Reserve. Now, who over the Federal Reserve? The Rothschilds. So, thanks to 1933 dealing with the uh, dealing with the Federal Reserve, thanks to 1933, all the damn the Rothschilds confiscated all the gold. So, Franklin Delano Roosevelt made it illegal for you to have and use gold in business transactions ever since 1933. He forced all the individuals to use banknotes. And ever since 1933, the Rothschilds got all the goddamn gold. You see what I'm talking about? And you really think this is a country? No, it's not a country. More to bring out. Um, dealing with also what we're talking about, the gold. Um, uh, when was this year? When, when was the year? I, I documented it. I wrote it down. Uh, I believe that this was in... Uh, when the Rothschilds hired National Guard to kill off gold miners. This was in what year it was? I wrote it down. The Rockefellers. Okay. Also the Rockefellers. They killed off gold miners in Colorado in 1912. They paid National Guards to kill off gold miners. You see? 
So yeah, man, this this all screwed up. You have to do your research, man. You have to do your research on this stuff. Have to do your research. So the King of England still rules this country um, through international bankers. And we own no property here. We are still citizens that subject it under these laws of the kings of England, man. And you've been taught that America won the Revolutionary War and defeated the British. All damn lies, man. Now, I'm, the reason why I say that because I'm about to go in prophecy. About to go into some more things. This is just politics talk. And it's also biblical prophecy talk. All right? So hold your horses. This lesson to be over with before you know it. Okay? Yeah, so America is a corporation, man. I keep telling you that. And that birth certificate, that's very, very, very significant. You know why? Because your birth certificate becomes collateral when your parents sign it. So this is how they are able to print money out of thin air, fiat money, which is backed by nothing. You are the CEO of your company. Don't sell your damn birth certificate. Tell your parents. Well, you can't do that because you'd be too young at that particular time. But if your parents knew they wouldn't sign your birth certificate over, because when they do that, basically when your parents sign your birth certificate, they give away your ownership to, to someone else. Your parents sign you off to the state as collateral when they sign your birth certificate. So your birth certificate is a registration into a corporation. And anything that's registered, the corporation feel like they own. You know, so you are a slave, you own. This is why the law enforcement can do whatever the hell they want to do because really you are you are a corporate slave. And this is why after your birth certificate is signed, um they'll give you a uh, basically social security number with a social security card. And when you look on that social security card your name is in all caps. That's not the real you. That's your straw man. Like you see right here. When you are born, your parents register you, register you with the government as corporation by receiving and signing a birth certificate. In a few years, your corporation will receive a taxpayer ID. You see that? Called a social security number. This is so you can be used as collateral for the government. Just like a damn inmate number when you become a prisoner. They give you a damn inmate number, a jail number. You know what I'm saying? So the Rothschilds just got us as debt slaves paying off their goddamn debt, debt because they confiscated all the resources of the earth, man. And America is in debt. Well, America ain't in debt. The corporation in debt. And they, and they are using the American citizens to pay off their debt. So when bankers came along, you know what I'm saying, they came along in 1933. They came along and stated that... Uh, you can still continue to conduct commerce, um, even though you, even though if you go bank bankrupt, you can still continue to co to conduct commerce. How? By pledging the citizens as collateral. They've been doing this ever since, um, basically, uh, the Federal Reserve man Act came in. So when your parents sign a birth certificate, you know what I'm saying. Basically, what they do is, uh. They sell you to the state and they register you and monetize the spirit and soul of you. And so there's no such thing as real money. There's no such thing as real money. It's, 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 it's just debt money. There's no value to it. There's no wealth to it. You know. But one thing about Columbia, a.k.a. America, this whore, this corporation cannot attack a human being. They, can't attack, they cannot attack a human being. They can't attack a human being. See what's going on in order for the United States Corporation to have power over you. You have to be part of the corporation. How you do that? By registering them with anything. If you register anything to with, with this corporation, you become part of. So they can't attack actually you. You have to be a part of the corporation. Your name has to be a corporate your, your name has to be a corporation in order for them to do a contract with you or operate commerce with you and that's why all your banking all, all all your all your mail that comes from the government if you would look at your name all your all your letters of your name is capitalized you get a light bill you get a water bill you look on your social security card you look on your driver license everything your whole entire name is in capitalized letters because truly that's not you that's your straw man that have made a deal with this corporation man you know, so when the government needs money, they borrow it from the Federal Reserve. And when the bank asks what you got for collateral, the government says the United States citizens' earnings. So this is why you pay taxes. 
So all your income tax goes to the bank holders as interest payment. This is why you pay taxes because the king of England, man. Still getting over on this. And you thinking you free over here, man. You're not free. You're a citizen. You're a slave. You're a corporate slave. And your birth certificate, uh, going back to the birth certificate, not to spend so much time on it, but your birth certificate is a security stock. It, it, it's basically, it's, it's, your birth certificate is a security on the stock exchange. It's a security on the stock exchange in the New York City stock market. So your birth certificate, um, at the bottom of your birth certificate, uh, I believe on the right hand side, you will have like this, this, this number that's in red. This, these red numbers and those red numbers that's printed on the birth certificate those numbers are the security stock exchange number on the world stock exchange so you can go to any good stock office and ask them to check these numbers and the computer and see how much this stock is worth on this certificate and you'll be amazed because when they check it out for you you'll find out that you are just man your birth certificate is worth millions of dollars so your birth certificate is is a stock on the stock exchange in America. Why? Because you are worth money, man. And the international bankers knows this, and they sold you out ever since 1930. And when your parents sign this birth certificate, basically they create what you call a straw man with the same name to confuse you in all capitalized letters, but that's not you. So, that's real talk, what I'm telling you. Not to get so much in that, but I'm going off talking about the birth certificate. But you need to know this because uh, it goes back, when you go back to the British and the American law, when you go back to the primarily the British law, capital letters and lowercase letters represents a human entity. Capital letters and lowercase letters represents a live human being. It represents flesh and blood. Capitalized letters and lowercase letters represents flesh and blood. All capitalized letters don't represent flesh and blood. All capitalized letters represent you sold out to the state. And the state is over you. So that is what you call your straw man. And that's why basically your name is in all caps. Whether it's on your social security, driver license, all your bills from the government, your check stubs. All your name is in all caps because that's not true. That's your straw man. And even when you die, your name in all caps would be placed on your tombstone. So, you know... You know, they create a false you out of a silly piece of paper known as your birth certificate before you can really comprehend and consent to it. You know, so yeah, man. So your straw man can take on costs, fees, taxes, fines, all kind of shit, man. You know, so wake up. Wake up, America, please. You're a corporate slave. You don't have no freedom over here in this great whore that is known as Columbia. And they never told you in school that Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. Uh, it has its own constitution, flies its own flag. Yes, Washington, D.C. has its own corporation, man. It, it, matter of fact, it's known as the uh, Empire of the City. Empire of the City. Let me put that in so you can see what I'm talking about. Empire of the City. Okay, right here, we're talking about the empire of the city. As you can see, this is how the Illuminati controls everything. These are called the three rings of power. The Illuminati controls the world through these three rings of power. All right, so this is called the empire of the city. Now, when you're dealing with finance, you're dealing with London. So the city of London is a one square mile secret country subject from the UK so the city of London city of London ain't got nothing to do with the UK the city of London is subject from the UK and it's the world's financial playground for the elite and money man of the world so they control you they control the finance through London this is how the Illuminati does this they control the finance the finance through London and they control you spiritually through the Vatican. Vatican City is the spiritual capital of the world and the center of Rome. Italy and houses the Pope. So they control you spiritually through here. So this is how you get brainwashed with all these religions and denominations. The elites control you spiritually through the Vatican. Alright? 
and they also control you militant wise through DC District Columbia so this is mass mind control and this is how the Illuminati control the world and the people through these through ring these three rings and so when you're dealing with the military you did de de these are the bullies the DC District Columbia these are the ones that's going out going out different countries bombing and killing innocent children and taking over land through DC they the bullies and so this is the flag of, of, of I'm going to show you the flag of of DC District Columbia which is a 10 mile secret state subject from the United States Constitution in Washington DC and so when you're dealing with uh, the, the, the Illuminati controlling you through these three rings of power like I say when you're dealing with finance you're dealing with the night game you're dealing with the night game when you're dealing with spiritual spirituality uh, you're dealing with the Jesuit game when you're dealing with the Vatican, you're dealing with the Jesuit game. And when you're dealing with D.C., you're dealing with the Masonic game. So these are the Masons, Knights, and Jesuits. And this is how they control you. So D.C. is a jurisdiction and it's separate from all the other 50 states. And they don't have a damn thing to do with America. You can get this book called The Empire of the City. And so they got these obelisks set up in London. They got one set up in Washington. And they got one set up in the Vatican. And this goes back to the phallic symbol. The symbol of Nimrod, this, this, this symbolized Nimrod's penis, which was cut off um, by Sham. If you if, 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 if you read it from the Egyptian perspective, this is the penis of, of, of Osiris that was cut off by his brother Seth. And so, like, I'm giving you royal knowledge, man. And so, when you're dealing with the empire of the city, man, basically, this is how the elite run the world. Now, this is the flag of District Columbia. This is the flag of Washington, D.C. Okay, and these three stars represents the three rings of power. It represents the uh, the Vatican, uh, the Knights. First of all, this represents uh, um, London. Let let me put it like this: three these three stars represents London, the Vatican, and D.C. Right there, as you can see. And like I say, Washington D.C. Man, right there. All this stuff is important. Washington D.C. Military power, the city of the city of London, England, financial power, and the Vatican. So these are the three rings of power. See? And that's why on McDonald's, on McDonald's you see that M is gold, because that golden that golden three, man. You know. Not to spend so much time in that, but I thought I'd shoot that your way. There's a lot of stuff that we must learn. This is why you have 12 banking districts in, in America. It's a lot of stuff we must learn. Before I close this lesson out, this lesson has approximately been almost an hour. And before I close it out, I want to go back into biblical prophecy concerning Columbia, concerning this great whore. So that's D.C., man, which is a corporation. Now I'm going to close the lesson out by going into this prophecy. Revelation 17, 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, Kings of the earth being, you already know, let me show you those again. The kings of the earth are the Illuminati. So the kings of the earth are the Illuminati. Also, when you go in Isaiah 14, 12, it speaks about it speaks about the Luciferians. Isaiah 14, 12 speaks about the Luciferians. That's the, also the Luciferians are these illuminated bloodlines. Illuminati means enlightened ones. And Lucifer means light barrier. So Isaiah 14, 12, how are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? This is the future prophecy that has not taken place yet. Letting you see that soon these 13 international banking families will lose all they will lose all their power under the most high in his head. The heavenly father and his son is going to bring down the power structure of these uh, international banking families. They are still in power right now, but there's a futuristic prophecy in the Bible saying that their power structure will be destroyed. That's Isaiah 14, 12. How are thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? The ones that's going to fall from heaven is the ones that's going to fall from rulership. And these are the banking families that's going to fall from their position of power soon. They are known as Luciferians. Lucifer means Hallel in Hebrew, which means light barrier. And when you think of light, you think of you think of illumination. When you think of light, to illuminate something, to light something. And so these are the holders of the light. The holders of the illumination. These are the Luciferians, which will fall from heaven soon, which will fall from their power. 
and go in slavery. It say, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how are thou cut down to the ground which weaken the nations? Because he weakened the nations through democracy and lies and falsehood and deceit. And so, like I said, man, that's, that's go hand to hand with the kings of the earth in Revelation 17, too, who have committed fornication. You know, they committed spiritual fornication. They have not told the truth. They are liars from the, from the foundation. And the inhabitants of the earth, the people of the earth, have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. Have been made drunk because the people of the earth believe all these damn lies that, that the media tell them. And District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., is the hub for, for controlling media. You can look it up. I'm not making it up, man. Washington, D.C. controls military. Washington, D.C. controls the media. Controls all the news stations and tell you all these lies. And so, this is how they committed fornication. By lying to you on these uh, new on the news and lying to you on these te just television, period, man. Washington, D.C. controls the media. And now, these people have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. Now, it's not talking about wine as a beverage. That wine symbolizes the lies. That's what that wine symbolizes. I've been... Because you can look at uh, Micaiah, 2, Micaiah 2 and 11. Micaiah 2 and 11. Or you can say Micah 2 and 11. And it speaks about lies being, uh, wine being lies. Micah 2 and 11, it says, If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. So if any man walking in the spirit of falsehood do lie, Saying I will prophesy unto thee of wine. Wine symbolized lies. And so that's how the, 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 the elites was able to make drunk the inhabitants of the earth through those lies. How they use, how do they, how do they infiltrate lies? Through the media, through District Columbia that controls the media. These elites control the media through these television shows and stuff. And so Revelation 17.3. And so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Names, full of names, bless me, having seven heads and ten horns. Now the woman that's sitting upon that beast is uh, America, man. Now I'm going to explain the woman. Uh, we don't have to explain the woman anymore. We already know explain that. That woman is Columbia, which is America. That's the personification of the United States, that great whore. She sitteth upon a beast. Now this beast... This beast represents European powers. The beast represents Esau. Esau, European power structure. The beast. All right? And the woman sitteth upon the beast. All right? It says, uh, Revelation 17, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman, America, Columbia, that great whore, sitteth upon a scarlet colored beast now these are uh ten, the beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns now i'm going to explain this beast because this beast is uh talking about the so-called white man power structure now the, the seven heads goes back to the seven kingdoms of the so-called white man esau the seven heads is i'm gonna break them down the seven heads is greece Rome, Spain, France, Germania Major, and Germania Minor, and Great Britain. Those are the seven heads. The ten horns is NATO, National Atlantic Treaty Organization, or you can say EU, European Union, or you can say the EEC, European Economical, Economic Community. Those are the ten horns. The ten horns is Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Greece, Ireland, England, and West Germany. Those are the ten horns, okay, which is modern-day NATO today. NATO um, was established in 1958 under what you call the Treaty of Rome, and it started out as ten coming markets. Today, it's more over than 28 conglomerate nations, but it started out with ten, all right? And those are the ten that I just named once again. Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Greece, Ireland, England, West, Germany. Those are the ten horns. 
All right, the seven heads once again is Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germania Major, Germania Minor, and Great Britain. All right, and it says the woman was arrayed in purple. The purple represents rulership because right now America is the big bully. Okay, America is in a position of power and rulership, and that woman was adorned in purple. As you can see, the woman was arrayed in purple, which represents uh, rulership, and, and it says, and scarlet color. She was uh, arrayed in purple and scarlet color. All right, scarlet goes back to uh, Revelation 12 and 3. Revelation 12 and 3, that just represents that great dragon, man, that great red dragon. And decked down with gold and precious stones and pearls. Say this woman was decked down with gold, precious stones and pearls. This woman had gold all over her, precious stones and pearls. You know why? That's talking about America, how it raped, robbed, and murdered other countries. It raped, robbed, and murdered other land masses to get what it got. America came up by stealing the resources of various land masses and countries. America have stole all the resources. And so this is how, this is why it tells you the woman was decked down with gold, precious stones, and pearls. That's talking about America that have stole the resources of other lands. Okay? That's what it's talking about. America stealing all the resources. Uh, let me give you a precept for that, the gold. Let's go to Ezekiel 28 and 4. Give you a precept for that. Ezekiel 28 and 4. All right, Ezekiel 28 and 4. Ezekiel 28 and 4. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver in thy treasures. See, that's talking about so-called white man. Because even though Ezekiel 28 2 talks about uh, the prince of Tyrus, it's not talking about the actual Hamites. It's talking about the prince of Tyrus and the formation of the so-called white man. It says, Thus said the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up. That's what the white man did. Thou hast said, I am a God. The white man claims he's the Most High God, because he set himself up as images of God. Whitewashing all the biblical black images. He said, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Basically, he rule over the nations. Yet thou art a man. You ain't nothing but a damn Edomite. You're not God. You white people are not God. You the descendants of Esau, the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. It says, and not God. Though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. That's because the white man is uh, pumped up, man. It says, Ezekiel 28.3, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. These white people, these crackers are smart, man. So-called white man is very wise. That's why, that's why the so-called white man goes back to Revelation chapter 3 when it says, Out of all the beasts of the field, the serpent was the most cunning one. That's the so-called white man. Symbolized at the serpent, which, that, which has that great wisdom. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Because this, this, man, this man is on game. This man is about two, three steps ahead on everything. If not, further than that. And with thy wisdom, thy, and with understanding thou hast gotten riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Christopher Columbus rape robbing and murdering his, uh, the Native Americans, taking their resources. Uh, uh, Ponce de Leon, Hernandez Soto, all these Edomites stealing the riches of the land. Puerto Rico is the Puerto Riches because it had very, it had very uh, uh, valuable mineral resources. And who stole that? The Italians? No, the Italians, the Spanishmen, conquistadors stole all the riches of Puerto Rico. And so, you know. This is this is what it's talking about, man. This is what it's talking about in Revelation 17 and 4. That woman that's decked down with gold, precious stones, and pearls. That's talking about America in the uh, uh, at the personification of Columbia. That woman decked down with gold, having a golden cup in her hand. The golden cup represents rulership, because the so-called white man is the position of rulership in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness. Of our fornication, because that's talking about how America was established. The so-called white man raped, robbed, and murdered, and shed the blood, sweat, and tears of the blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans to get what he got. So that's what it's talking about. Okay, that's what it's talking about, man. All right. 
Um, Revelation 17, 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. That's America, man. The great mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. The great mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. The great mother of harlots and abomination of the earth, man. See? And I saw the woman that was drunken with the blood of the saints. Now, she was drunken with the blood of the saints because that goes back to the atrocities of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The saints are the Israelites. The saints, you can look that up in, um, where does it say that? Psalms 50 and 5. I believe the saints being the Israelites. Psalms 50 and 5. Psalms 148, verse 13. That talks about the saints being the Israelites. The blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. You see? Say she was drunken with the blood, those atrocities that the so-called white man committed against the blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. Killed us up, stole all our uh, resources. She was drunken with the blood of the saints. She was drunken with the blood of the Israelites. This great whore right here. Drunken with the blood of the Israelites, man. America. District of Columbia. And with the blood of the martyrs. With the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh Shai, who they called Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So don't think it's strange that the historical female personification of the United States of America is a woman that's named Columbia. Don't think it's strange. Because it's not. Don't think this is strange. This is the great horror of Revelation 17. You see? Revelation 17, 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. Okay? The beast that thou saw it was, and is not, and shall ascend out the bottomless pit. Now, that's talking about, basically, that's talking about, from ancient Rome, the beast that thou saw it was, and it's not. Rome fell in the year 193 AD. Shall ascend. Rome came back in power through what you call the Treaty of Rome there in 1958 when they when they set up ten coming markets known as NATO. That's how it ascended out the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit is Europe. And shall go in perdition. And so it's talking about ancient Rome to the revived Roman Empire, which is America. The beast that I saw was, and it's not, that was ancient Rome, and then it shall ascend out the bottomless pit. Rome came back in power. Through what you call the Treaty of the Treaty of the Treaty of Rome, 1958, when them when them um, conglomerate nations started out as ten coming markets, NATO. That's how they send it back out. But it says that that it's gonna go into perdition. So America came out of NATO, man, because America came out of Britannica. America came out of England, and it says that it's gonna go into perdition. America is gonna go into destruction. It says, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Whose names were not written in the book of the life, book of life from the foundation of the world. What is the book of life? The book of life is the Bible. How you have your name written in it? Rehearse the righteous acts. If you simply do what the Bible says, you keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and you do what this Bible says, your name is written in the book. If you don't want to do what the Bible says and you want to fall out to all the customs of America, your Bible is not your name is not in the book. It says that it was many that wandered after this beast, whose name was not written in the book of the life from the foundation of the world. And when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And that's talking about modern day America because it's, it's kind of giving a timeline from going back from ancient Rome to, to uh, modern day America, man. Which America came out, out of NATO. America came out one of the ten. The ten coming markets. America came out of uh, Britain. Great Britain. England. Okay. Revelation 17, 9. And here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven seven mountains on which the woman seated the seven mountains on which the woman seated Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germ Germania Major, Germania Minor and Great Britain All right, and, and there are seven kings five are fallen. I'm going to give you the five that fall who are the five that fall? Greece, they fell Spain fell, France fell German Germania Major fell, Germania Minor fell that was the five and then it says, and one is, that one is, is the Roman Empire. Because that's when, that, that was the empire that John was in when he wrote the book of Revelation. 
That was the empire existing during the John when he was writing this. So the one is is the Roman Empire. It says, and the other is yet not come. The other is yet not come is Br Britannica, Great Britain, which America came out of Great Britain. It says, and when he come, he must continue for a short space. Okay? Revelation 17, 11. And the beast that was, and it's not, that was ancient Rome, because it fell in one nine year we fell in, ancient Rome fell in the year of 193 AD by Septimus Severus, presenting his Niger and Marcus. They conquered the Roman Empire in the year 193, 193 A.D. It fell. And even he is the eighth. So basically, Rome came back in power. They say the beast that was and is not. Even he is the eighth. He is the eighth. And so, like I said, um, um, he is the eighth. And it's of the seven. And it's talking about Britannica. And go into perdition because they're talking about how America came out of Britannica. That's talking about America that's gonna go into perdition. Perdition means destruction. America gonna go into destruction. How? Thermonuclear missiles. It says, in the ten horns with thy saw of ten kings. We went over them ten horns. Once again, Belgium, Denmark, France, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Greece, Ireland, England, and West Germany. Which shall receive no kingdom yet. Because the ten common markets went set up until the year 1958. Under the Treaty of Rome, it says, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. And so they received that power there in um, 1958, man, when they set up them ten common markets. Through the treaty, what you call the Treaty of Rome. And them ten common markets is known as NATO. And America is part of NATO. Revelation 17, 13. These have one mind and shall give the power and strength unto the beast. And see... Uh, those ten common markets says they get they gave the power and strength to the beast, man. You see, and the woman that sat upon the beast was America that came out of the ten common markets. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords, kings of kings, and they that are with him, they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation 17, 5. And he said unto me, The waters with thy sword, where the horse seated, are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And that whore is America that came out the ten coming markets. This is Babylon, the melting pot. This is where you have people, multitudes, and nations and tongues. And he said unto me, The waters with thy sword, where the horse seated, are the people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Revelation 17, 16. It says, And the ten horns with thy sword upon the beast. Because those ten horns represent those ten conglomerate nations back in 1958. These shall hate the whore. And so what it's talking about? It's talking about how the, the, the allies of the United States, they allies now. But they're going to turn against this whore, man. They're going to turn against this bitch, which is America. Those ten coming markets, uh, some of those uh, NATO nations is going to turn against America, man. America, which is part of NATO, NATO going to turn against America. That's what it means. They going to turn on America. It say, the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, which is America, and shall make her desolate and naked. Because NATO going NATO to uh, bring America down through nuclear destruction. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. America is going to be burnt with fire. A precept of that is... Uh, Obadiah 1 and 7. So let me grab that. Frumo lit. Frumo lit. Frumo uh, verses. And then this lesson is over with. This lesson will not be no longer than an hour and 20 minutes. So we had an hour and 19 minutes. Obadiah 1 and 7. Uh, what is it? Obadiah 1 and 7. It talks about how are these things of Esau, the so-called white man, which is over America, the great whore. Obadiah 1 and 7. All the men of thy confederacy. What is a confederacy? A, a confederacy is a group. A, feder, a confederacy is like a group. Association. All the men of your group have brought you even to the border. See? That's talking about war to come, man. The men that were at peace with you have deceived you and prevailed against you 
They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee, and there is no understanding of him. So that's talking about how NATO going to turn against America and blow the hell out of America with thermonuclear destruction, man. That's what it's talking about. Revelation 17, 17. For God have put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And so, so when NATO turned against America, that was put in their heart to do that. And to agree and give their kingdom into the beast. And give their kingdom into the beast. And to the words of God shall be fulfilled. It's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. Revelation 17, 18. And the woman which thou saw is the great city. And that's America, man. What they call Babylon. Which reigneth over the king. Which reigns over the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth that run America and reign over America. Like I told you. It's the Illuminati banking families. Hope this was edifying to you guys. This lesson has been an hour and 20 something minutes. Long lesson but very edifying. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share with brothers and sisters. And till next time, see you on the other side. Solid Foundation, Israelite Academy. Shalom.